hello everyone welcome back to my video it's your girl simone nicole back at it again with another video and clearly today's video is a bit of a different vibe i just wanted to relax and like be comfortable and talk about the year of 2020 i think the 2020 was the best worst year of my life when we started off 2020 it was such a big deal i remember like everyone was like oh my god i can't believe we're crossing into another decade it's 2020 like, crazy amazing things are gonna happen and i was just so happy and so hopeful i remember that towards the beginning of the year i was so excited because i had hit like just over 2,000 subscribers and in october i had just hit a thousand subscribers so that was a really big deal for me like i was working a lot i was making really good money um, i'm a server and i was making really good money um i was saving really really well I had the plan to move with a roommate to Atlanta and everything was just everything. In addition to that, I also had my first like major brand repost me. Um, InStyler reposted me to their story for using one of their styling brushes. I remember exactly where I was sitting when it happened because it was just such a big deal for me that a big brand had acknowledged me saw what i was doing and reposted me in any way shape or form like i went to puerto rico that was so much fun you guys i can't even describe so much fun to like just get up and i was so proud of myself to have the financial stability to just say like hey i want to go to puerto rico <laughs> i planned the trip and within two weeks i was gone my family and I went to Baltimore, Maryland to go to the African American Museum and that was a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful experience just learning more about my culture and my people and just being able to spend some time with my family was really, really fun. And little did I know that would be the last time I would travel before we launched into a global pandemic. I remember when everything started to become real because at my job we like started to take like precautions like we took salt and peppers off of the table um, and then like other small things. Within a week of us changing these um, procedures we shut down and we actually shut down three days before my birthday for my 24th birthday. I was really excited to celebrate my 24th birthday because I am not someone that has like celebrations surrounding just me so i was really 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 excited to do that this year and i was going to get myself a section and make a whole weekend out of it and then our entire state shut down and i went from making really good money to no money overnight i went from having like birthday plans with the people that I really cared about and wanted to celebrate with to having nothing to the point where I didn't even see my family on my birthday and I understand that that's probably like a first world problem kind of thing like okay you can see your family on your birthday but other people lost their family to COVID I'm not unaware of my blessings here Being aware of my blessings doesn't take away the hurt feelings, you know? Little did I know that that would be the beginning of the things that I would be missing in 2020. I remember walking into the stores for the first time after the shutdown and seeing the literal bare empty shelves in my local grocery store and I almost started crying because it was like an apocalypse. I went through a brief state of denial that our state had closed and that this COVID thing was getting serious and once i got through that period i got myself together mentally and i did what i know how to do best which is to work i applied for unemployment i finally got out of my delusion um, and out of my state of denial applied for unemployment um started collecting that which really wasn't much um and then i started doing like instacart and things like that soon after we found out 
the stimulus checks came through i did not receive a stimulus check annoying but what i did receive was the extra 600 dollars a week on my unemployment and that allowed me to invest in my youtube channel and as i have expressed before the rest is history after i was able to invest my money into my youtube channel and improve the quality of my videos i saw exponential growth in my channel in such a short amount of time i think we just hit i think we hit 10,000 because i was on the phone with my friend just now and he like i was like i don't want to know he was like mm -mm, 10,000 i was like mm -mm, excuse me I, I should not be this excited guys we did it i was just so motivated and so happy because I was essentially getting paid to do YouTube, which is like my dream. Like Then another left turn happened. We went into one of the biggest civil rights movements in history. And at the time when I recorded the vlog that I did, I had no idea that I would literally be taking a part in history. I, I, I had no clue when it happened. I just remember the emotional turmoil that I felt at the time and how I was fighting with like wanting to use my platform and use my voice and then like feeling like a bad black that's just how I put it like every time I opened my phone there was some a new black face that had just been murdered a new black face that had just been killed we're like so easily and casually loading people dying onto our timelines and acting like it's normal while it's in the name of like making sure that people are aware of what's going on it was just exhausting i tried to make sure that i still remember that i'm a person outside of like my obligations <laughs> to my people and i remember during that time as well um the main choice reached out to me and wanted to work with me and they sent me my first PR that I had ever received and technically I guess it wouldn't be PR because I received the products and ordered like in exchange to post. The post ended up doing really really well. Check me out. Check me out. Boom. Bam. Bam. Bop. Bada bop boom. Pow. I gained like 300 followers on Instagram which is really big for me. Um, and I gained a, a relationship with a brand. In my YouTube content, I was like, oh yeah, I want to start taking supplements in order to grow my hair. And that is what brought along me taking MSM. I cannot tell you <laughs> how actually much of a turning point that was for me. If you haven't watched that video, definitely watch it so that you'll understand what I'm talking about. But taking those supplements or taking the sulfur, whatever you want to call it, really, really, really put me at a very low place mentally. And at the same time, my family has so much, so much going on. And I was still getting on camera and recording videos and acting like everything was okay while I would be taking breaks and speaking to prevent myself from bursting out crying because I was just so unhappy and so upset but I knew that I had a job to do. That was really the first time that I learned the lesson that I have picked a uniquely hard path because I am my brand. <laughs> um, you know, at other jobs, you can have an attitude and go to work, but you know, you're at a desk, you're at a cubicle, um, you're filing paperwork, your human interaction isn't a lot and if you got an attitude for a day your co-workers would just write it off and be like oh she's just having a bad day but when you are the brand and when everything that you have depends on your personality and your ability to get up and be this person that everyone expects you to be when i came off of the msm i finally started to get a better grip on the things that was happening with me and I got into therapy. When I say I needed that, I cannot tell you how amazing it has been to sit down, 
to talk with my counselor about everything that I have going on in my life. Once I hit that breaking point and I started to have someone to lean on who was my counselor, that helped a lot because it, it helped me to not be so stuck and to move. And I ended up making plans to move to Atlanta by myself because my roommate decided that that is not her journey at this moment. So I made plans to move by myself. So I'm simultaneously trying to grow this brand. And now I had this new audience and I just really didn't know what to do with them. So I'm like trying to show up to a job and then trying to be this person and trying to like keep a hold of all my responsibilities. I am so proud of myself for achieving what I've been able to achieve in this past month. December has been the hardest month of 2020. I got through almost all of vlogmas which i am extremely 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 proud of myself for because it's a lot of work to upload every single day i can't wait to tell you guys about my different testimonies that i have my testimonies from this year alone oh my god i just can't explain god's timing in literally handing me some of the most horrific things that can happen and giving me the biggest opportunity that I've ever had presented to me. At the same time, and having to negotiate the pure happiness and deep sorrow at the exact same time. I am overjoyed for the emotional growth that I am experiencing right now. I'm overjoyed for the woman that I am turning into I'm overjoyed for the lessons that I am learning. And I'm grateful. I'm so grateful that I made it through this year. And for any of you guys that have been struggling and that have barely made it out, you made it, you're living, you're standing, you fought, you survived, you won. And now, we are going into 2021 and I just really pray for just a smoother year. That's, I just want a smoother year. Thank you guys so much for being here with me, um, for witnessing my growth, for wanting to be a part of my journey. I wish you all the best and I cannot wait to see you guys next year in 2021. And with all that being said, thank you guys so much for joining me. Remember to keep positivity in your life because positivity breeds positivity. And we have absolutely no time for negativity in 2021. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. Happy New Year and I'll see you next year. Bye guys.